There's no place to escape to. This is the last time. Oh, On the left. <laughs> That's when the cannibalism started. Disclosures, soft and only getting softer, friends. Mm, I love soft disclosure. <laughs> it does sort of feel like currently the UFO news. We're going to get into it. The, the UFO news kind of feels like, you know, when you're too drunk to have sex mm. <laughs> and you're just folding it in. Yeah, and you're, you're, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. It's, I ruined everything, baby. Yeah. I don't it kind of feels like that. I know for a fact no one at this table has the ability to fold it in. I'm sorry, uh, because baby. if it is not hard, it is in us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're not folding this thing anywhere. I'm including the balls. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they also okay. get very, very <laughs> soft. So, what is it? I know it's like. Putting all the balls sure, in the butthole, that's dogs in the bathtub. In what the is bathtub. balls in the vagina? Uh, I think it's called putting the Louis Anderson in the, in the, <laughs> the kiddie pool. Right? Welcome, We're having fun here. Welcome to it's last, a relaxed fit. <laughs> welcome to the last podcast on the left, everyone. Ben hanging out with Henry and Marcus. Thank you all so much for listening. A small reprieve. After learning all about the troubled teen industry, don't we have to learn about something that's real? <laughs> it's right. it's nice to do. It's good it to is. do because it was a current issue. But this is also a current issue because we're watching the enveloping, and the opening up, the gaping mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the the eye hole into the guts <laughs> of the UFO world. We're looking at the very colon. Yeah, yes, of the indeed. UFO information world. Right? Did now. you see the most recent footage of the orb? There's a new orb. There's, There's a, a new, new orb. orb. Jeremy it's a trip, Corbell. Bro. Jeremy Corbell just put out another picture of a flash of a chunk. What he? It was some sort of another official video that he showed. He, he teased us with a slice. He mm. did indeed. And it's like it looks like a metal orb. Okay. Yeah, it looks like Louis Anderson getting into a hot tub. I did the bit. <laughs> <I did that. laughs> All right, everyone. Today's topic: the Trinity UFO crash and the slow unfurling of UFO disclosure. Now, for the last few years, students of the UFO phenomenon have been tantalized by oh. the soft disclosure <laughs> movement. This Everywhere. Is, it's spearheaded by the United States government. It I could do... definitely use more wet t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, I don't want to see a ufologist tantalized. <laughs> well, think about it. You just said uh, you got home from a long day of work, right? Doing what? You're at the uranium mines. Yeah. Right. Every day, all you do, you got your pickaxe looking for that glow. Because you know what that glow means? If it's glowing, it's showing in my wallet. Yeah, right. That's big old Uranium fever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Think, a, a, a fever called cancer. You think the people that mine for diamonds keep the diamonds. They don't just go back to work. The yeah, next yeah, they barter. That's what I would do. I'd be like, now I'm negotiating because I'm the one with the diamonds. And then all yes. of a sudden, a guy shows up with a gun. Yeah. He just fucking shoots you in the back of the head. Yeah. Right. It's unfair. It is. <laughs> but you get home from a long day uranium mining, right? When you know that your ufologist house husband has been hard at work, right? That's how oh, he cancels. Oh, I see. So the ufologist is not working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, he's he is working. He's thinking. <laughs> and he's at home. And but, but we decided to do a surprise because he knew you had a long day, yeah. right? So first thing he does is he sits you down in your favorite little uranium lead line chair, right? Because okay. you have to sit in it because if not, you contaminate the entire house. That's nice. to watch, right? Yeah. But then he comes out. He brings you a nice little glass of Chianti and you notice He's only wearing his suspenders. <laughs> and then what's those he suspended hard, them to? Yeah, what's it? They're just hooked into the flap of apron flesh above his penis. <laughs> oh, gotcha. okay. Right, because okay. as you know, as a ufologist, you have four bellies. <laughs> because I have my top belly. I have my belly that reaches like kind of underneath my belly. It's right. like a shadow belly, right? Uh -huh. It's a hidden belly, kind of a vestigial belly. Uh -huh. Then I have my pubic mound that I consider <laughs> a belly as well. Absolutely. You and, can store nuts in there. And there truly is then another little tiny little pouch just under that. So and it, that's all the mystery that is me. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And so that's how a ufologist tantalizes us that one fold goes up. Ooh, what's that? Pink, kind of brown. Another fold goes up. Ooh, getting gray. <laughs> right? <laughs> you never know what's underneath there. And yeah. then he brings you a bunch of borscht because, again, that's a no cooking food. <laughs> well, isn't that fantastic? All right. The Trinity UFO crash. That's the thing is the students of the UFO phenomenon, they've been tantalized. Okay. The American public, on the other hand, couldn't give a fuck about soft disclosure. And this is, of course, I think it's Wherever. due to all the shit that's gone down over the last six oh, some odd years. Oh, fuck like it's, you. It's, what has <laughs> happened? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Uh, have you seen this? 
Well, have you heard about this? Uh-huh. COVID, COVID. I remember. There you go. Thank you for being here, Mr. Leno. Well, put it another way, if the soft disclosure movement had begun in, say, 1996, Americans would be losing their yeah. fucking minds with excitement and wonder like it was the first 30 minutes of Independence Day. Do you don't think that Bill yeah. Clinton wasn't in the fucking basement of the White House trying to figure out how he could put a picture, put a picture of a UFO in the news and not talk about him shoving a cigar inside <laughs> of that woman's vagina? Well, like, think he, about it. Like, he would have... He was desperate for disclosure. <laughs> Cigar. Umama. Oh. Umama. So was perhaps Umama. that foreshadowing. Maybe Monica Lewinsky's pussy is a black hole. His cigar is umama. <laughs> and when he inserted that said cigar, a Cuban, into Monica, it opened up the third world. I and then, boom, that's why we have this alien spacecraft with us today. We should have got him on having the illegal cigar. <laughs> That's they, where the crime was. That's all they smoke is the Cubans. Before the embargo, buckets of buckets of them. <laughs> they were sending buckets of them. That's hypocrisy. That's it, the real crime. That's here. the crime. Well, as it is, the soft disclosure movement, which is changing the study of the UFO phenomenon before our very eyes. Oh, yes. It gets buried in the day to day media noise, even with regular coverage from reputable sources like the New York Times. Mm. But the thrust of this episode is one such article. That's the hump of it. And you are truly, are like, I love the fact that I got you now. You got me. And we talk about it on the show, in the live show, we've talked about how like I have Mm -hmm. recruited you, but it's not a bit. It's nice because you were like, oh, this article is interesting. And I was like, I'm reaching him. <laughs> it's so, it's so, he, he's making his own little UFO choices. Well, it, it took clicked. the New York Times. Wow. It, it wasn't even the New York Times. It just Good. finally clicked. You because know, arguably the New York Times is, is at its political weakest point in the history of the New York Times. Well, yeah, it's for the UFOs now. Yeah. Now it's for the UFOs. Yeah. So the New York Times has become the weekly world news. No, it's not. No, but that ah, UFOs are real wow. news now. It's He's real news. Saying, That's the thing. You're 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 misunderstanding because the purposefully weekly world, obfuscating. <laughs> no, weekly World News had one proper article every single store, every single uh, week. little week. There was something <laughs> real. People accuse me of being the op. <laughs> I'm starting to think you're the op. No. Yeah, no, not no. an op. Just simply a what would you call it? A contrarian agent. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Muddying the water. I can't <laughs> deny that. Otherwise, it'd be proving your point. Exactly. So, yes, I am. Whoa. All right. <laughs> well, weird. Well, bad. T- That's bad. I also just have to get this off my chest. I just want to see a commercial where it's just a miner going through and finding a diamond and crying because he's so happy he can feed his family, then getting killed and having a rich European man steal it from him. And then it just says he went to Jared's. <laughs> you have that to is get the that. entire fraudsters. Fraudsters <laughs> yeah. did a whole series about how the diamond industry is fake. <laughs> okay. It is really, yeah, but yes, he good went luck. to Jared's. Well, just last week, the Times covered an amendment buried in the new defense bill that requires the Department of Defense to review historical data related to unidentified aerial phenomena, UAPs, which is the fancy new acronym for UFOs. So this story, this is not about, this episode mm. is not about the fact that this is in the New York Times. This episode is about what's in the new defense bill. I wonder if they're going to be able to shave a little bit off of that nearly trillion dollar budget. (laughs) Where are they going to find the money? This is literally (laughs) like how they did it. Because again, you say fancy new word for UFOs. It's specifically done. To be acronym. A, it's a. It, it's it, not a word. Don't confuse. Don't, it's fine. It's UAP. It's fine. You know what I'm saying. Um, but the word for it is specifically to distance from the topic. Yeah. Right. It is made to like sound like a thing that's not a thing. Unidentified aerial phenomena means nothing. Yeah. Right. It's just like anything. It's a UFO. Can be it's what they did with but UFOs, they felt like because that's a non-serious term, this is how they use it to make it government so you can get a budget behind it. To be fair to the government. Y'all kind of ruined the term UFO. It's too, it's too late. It is. It's got a connotation to it that it you does. can't fucking can't get, you can't get rid of. It really there has a smell to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that very sweet, it's that third belly smell. Mm. <laughs> well, introduced by Wisconsin Representative Mike Gallagher, who declined an interview request from the Times. He just thinks it makes him gay. <laughs> He's got a weird little head. <laughs> Republican. The amendment requires a written report detailing the historical record relating to UFOs and the United States dating back to 1945, two years before the alleged Roswell crash. And I still, I cannot stress enough, I really want the audience to know this is an amendment to the defense bill. This is not, this is not speculation. This is 
fact. Well, it's because they're they are uncovering a lot of shit because they have they're finally opening up the coffers mm -hmm. of all of the various like military people that have called in said that they've seen shit that they kind of hidden or not fully looked into. But this is like a new list of uh, sightings and experiences that they're finally. So I want to see this list that they're looking at starts around 2000. Like it's in the 2000s. So you're looking at sightings and so from the last 20 years. No, they, this one right here. No, this is going back but to 1945. Goes, yes, yeah. but they're the the money went into the the yeah. new sightings and that. But now what they're trying to create a whole aggregate service for it because that's what Jacques Vallée is doing in a very. He talked about it in a very boring three hour podcast. <laughs> I listened to him. Talk. I'm just so happy the U.S. government and the military is taking into consideration the people who are traumatized by seeing UFOs but not getting the respect they deserve. Now, if you were assaulted within the military, no hotline for you. <laughs> <laughs> did you see something floating that looked like a tit? <laughs> Call us right now. You got to be careful. May I ask this? Is it possible that Roswell is the Richard Reed of UFO uh, sightings? Richard Reed, of course, the shoe bomber that they set up. They gave him a candle wick and they were like, we got you. Yeah. Because they set him up and he literally was walking like a flame. Is it possible Roswell was a recreation of what happened in 1945 so that they retro engineered it and then got the press because of that? Hmm. But that, that, no, nah, I don't They're think very so different. because they had, they had like Roswell was a purposeful cover up. If you listen yeah. to, uh, what's his name that actually went out and found the cover, you know, who found the wreckage. Stanton Freeman. No, well, not well, that, he, was well, the guy he was who, the guy who, yeah, I'm talking about the guy who actually found the records, the guy that's in the photo mm. uh, that's holding up what is supposedly a uh, debris from a UFO crash, okay. but is actually just a weather balloon because he yeah, showed up with the debris from the UFO crash. And then they said, like, no, 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 don't show that. Show this. And he's like, it's a fucking weather balloon. They're like, yeah, we know. Fucking show it and tell him that it's a fucking UFO. And then the New York Times continued that fucking bullshit at the very top of this article about the new, the new sighting that Jacques Vallée has been sitting on like a big stinky egg, <laughs> which is a story <laughs> that happened before Roswell that is very interesting, this this Trinity crash. Yeah. But it, it is, it's very frustrating because at the top of the New York Times, it's like, uh, you know, hey, when a top secret weather balloon crashed and created the Roswell stink, and it's like, fuck you, bro. It <laughs> wasn't a weather it. balloon, man. Interesting. It's like when your favorite adult porn star who has sex with men on camera and you find out she's a lesbian, <laughs> and then that's why she hasn't been responding to your DMs. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Well, back to the amendment. This requirement has a deadline, the requirement for the report of June 2024. But the reason why it has such a long timeline is that it requires a full review of all U.S. government information, including classified documents. And it's significant because the government is finally taking historical reports of UFOs seriously, rather than just recent military reports and footage. They're looking at the historical reports, but they're leaving the hysterical reports behind. And I want to talk about the erasure from comedy. <laughs> and the government really and how powerful. I am. We are all being canceled from being funny anymore. Yeah, the chatbot's going to take our jobs anytime now anyway. Take but it. I actually think June 2024 isn't long enough. Yeah, a year and a half. That's not, I think they almost gave themselves an out. This is like Bill Clinton saying, I'll talk to you for two hours. And then he de debated what the word is, is. Yeah, he's very <laughs> smart. He's a lawyer. They can't do anything within 16 months. You don't think so? I don't think so. I think hmm. this is actually them being like, case closed once again, but they can sniff around a little bit. Technically, they've already been working on it. Yeah. So this is like a thing that is, they're continuing it, but I do feel there's a little bit of that. This is like, that's why like we're excited for this new breakthrough and yeah. soft disclosure, but it's not necessarily like gonna necessarily like it's, it's just, still the government yeah it's well, so hard because they're such douchebags yeah well just listen let's unfold it a little okay. bit more you might change your opinion just a little bit because this is building upon what has come before this report will be generated by the dod's new all domain anomaly resolution office uh <laughs> it's called arrow 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 Mm. I like that though. Yeah, Aro. Yeah, I do like Aro. 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 Oh yeah, uh, A A R O. And sure. that's a new acronym that I just su I'd suggest y'all get comfortable. Yeah, with that it's oh yeah, Aro. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's good. We're going to be saying Aro. that because A tip was technically like that's not that's defunct and all sap is also long and dumb and oh yeah. Yeah. Also, George Santos's father died in Roswell. So maybe show a little fucking respect. <laughs> man, I will never respect that man. <laughs>
Well, ARO replaces the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group, mm. which in turn had replaced the Navy's Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. They do such a good job of hiding shit inside of acronyms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what's different here is that the Navy's UAPTF was uh, sort of Say properly. UAPTF. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that was sort of a hodgepodge. And the AOIMSG, the AOMS. AOMSG. Yeah. That never had a director, which tells you that the Pentagon either didn't care, didn't want people to know, <gasps> or didn't want to know because it would have resulted in more work and less certainty. Well, okay. over the last couple of UFO episodes, and I've heard people talk about this too often, where... Uh, UFOlogists, they show up in a little town, right? And mm -hmm. after a while, like, they're, like, let's say there's UFO flap and there's, like, there's a lot of stuff happening, especially after we just covered the Pennsylvania Bigfoot UFO invasion. Mm -hmm. and yeah, do the, they show up in little towns for like a court mandate because they can't a be lot of times. schools? They can't, they're no longer <laughs> legally allowed to drive, so they just live there. Live there, yeah. Um, right. But the, the police are like sick of taking these calls. Mm -hmm. And they don't mind letting these nerds set up shop and take the calls for them. They're like, all right, yeah, you fucking do it. Which I sort of feel might have been the general sentiment mm -hmm. amongst the military industrial programs. You do it. About, all right, you guys can handle this shit. Some of you guys are into it. The, the more wacky ends of it, like OSAP, and technically the, that whole group, which was just a arm of ATIP, which ATIP was the actual secret program, right? And OSAP was just a chunk of it. But they were like dumping a bunch of money into creating essentially theoretical patents on technology that we don't exist yet that they are sort of extrapolating from the weird little bing bongs that they're seeing in the sky that they are saying like oh maybe these are like gravitational engines wormhole traveling and they're, they're preemptively trying to yeah. patent this shit without getting it and so the, but the military industrial complex is like we're already too busy blowing up people in caves. Yeah. Why don't you guys just all do this? Also, Henry, I'm sorry. You just canceled this 30 years from now because that's a racial slur to call aliens a bing, bing bongs. bongs. Yeah, no. <laughs> and I, uh, I, just because what? they do say bing bong, bing bong when they bing walk. Bong, we bong, didn't yeah. know that at the time of recording, to be fair. I'm going to tell you and all right bong, now. bong, that is wrong, though. It's all about being, you know why you have to be wrong? So you have room to grow to be right. There you so go. that's what this is all about. So this is just the beginning of my learning chapter. And so that's Great. why preemptive, I'm sorry for everything, preemptive, I am now an adult. That was me just as a little boy, a <laughs> tight little, a like 38 year old boy. Absolutely. But it does remind me, we shot that little special that went absolutely nowhere mm. in Stephenville, Texas. Mm -hmm. And yep. one of the people that was just a local guy, great guy. But he was the hub, and he would get calls 24-7. Oh, yeah. Because the police had to drink. Yeah, well, they, <laughs> they, couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't handle it. I feel like there's a little bit of that. And then also, we've talked about in several books, there were Skinwalkers of the Pentagon that yeah. uh, uh, George Knapp wrote that basically talks about a lot of these guys are just evangelical, and they don't want anything to do with it. They, yeah. they don't like looking at it. They think but it's scary. Then there's the, also the wing of the evangelical party, someone that actually works at Sirius. Uh, I was speaking with him. He thinks it's all God. Oh, yeah. He thinks it's oh, all yeah. like angels and shit. So it's very bizarre. You, I don't think it would be the end of religion because people, as we no, as we learned in 2016, in. you just, yeah, you just wrap it back. The in. Pope, the new fancy little slipper popes, just said, oh, "I can't wait to baptize an alien. Mm -hmm. He can't wait to suck a fucking little alien's mound right before he can get to it. He can't wait to fucking molest these things." <laughs> well, there's also the other side of it is that there's those that believe they are angels, but the larger side of it, and this has been going on since the 70s and 80s, I've got a whole collection of these fucking books, are Christians who believe that these are demons. Yeah, that's the opposite. Oh, yeah, it's no. just it's just so funny. It's anything. Yeah. It's, it's literally just anything. They don't know what it is. And then half the rest of them are being like, there's cloud blips. You mm -hmm. see that cloud pussy with butthole? Yeah, yeah I, I saw did. the cloud butthole, yeah. 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 You, that's you, just a weird ass cloud. Call mm -hmm. me alien. Call me demon. Do not call me Bing Bong. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. I've grown. I've learned. I really hurt when you call me Bing Bong. <laughs> but with anyway, I've got to go. Bing Bong. <laughs> bing Bong Bong. Bing Bong. I'm bing just, bong, bong. there's a stereotype for a reason. from your grave. Get ahead of the competition by using Stamps.com to mail and ship. Stamps.com lets you print your own package and shipping labels right from your home or office. Stamps.com has postage rates you literally can't find anywhere else, like up to 84% off USPS and UPS. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. And if you sell your products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects you with every major marketplace and shopping cart. Use Stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and a printer, and they even send you a free scale. 
We here at LPN love stamps.com. We use it all the time and it helps our letters get to the people that need them the most. Set your business up for success when you get started with stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code LEFT for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code LEFT. Well, with Aro, there is a director. His name is Sean M. Kirkpatrick, and he's a former chief scientist at the Missile and Space Intelligence Center, known affectionately as Dr. K. (laughs) Kirkpatrick has a depth of expertise in scientific and technical intelligence, space policy. The moon should not be allowed to vote. (laughs) Research and development, quote unquote, acquisitions Ooh, oh. and a specialization in space counter space mission areas man i've been having so much problem okay. like just the the counter space wars i have in my kitchen alone has just been <laughs> absolutely ah. ridiculous i can't get a pasta maker that's actually really good good job i can't get a pasta maker. <laughs> can't get a pasta maker that's great good for you in other words, this Dr. K, he is no Luis Elizondo. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, this yeah. Is, he's a heavy. I mean, he's, they're bringing yeah. in a serious man. He's You're a real dude. Because, well, technically, Luis Elizondo was the, for those of you who don't know, he was the, the outspoken former member of ATIP that came out and helped, quote unquote, leak these December 2019 videos, and December 2017 videos, yeah. the Tic Tac, the Go Fast videos. He helped put them out to the world. But a lot of people believe that Luis Elizondo claims to be a lot more important to that ATIP program than he actually was. And then sort of just was the guy with the videos that talked to Tom DeLong that got yeah. Tom. De- but then Tom DeLong also has been like endlessly worked by these various intelligent ops that yeah. I don't think he has any fucking clue what he what he wandered no. into the middle of, which is why I think he's very happily going back on tour with Blink-182. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> also, uh, Foo Fighters will be re- replacing Pantera in uh, Berlin. That's yeah. great. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Just, Pantera should not be around anymore. I know. It's yeah. over. Yeah. It's done. It, yeah, it really is. It's, it's a shame. It yeah. is. What the it is. Abbott Brothers made Pantera. Yeah. All right. Well, what they've actually appointed here is someone who might give answers one way or another. But that's if you believe that the government is ever going to give a straight answer. I fucking, even just that idea <laughs> is so stupid to me. Like, that's the thing. That's like, well, I, I get it why everybody's excited that they might be taking a more legitimate look yeah, at you. Which I am, understand. yeah. But also, again, that just allows them to bring it closer in. It allows them to bring it closer in. It allows them to just be like, oh, hey, yeah, definitely UAP, and they don't want to maybe talk about the fact that we might be losing to China in the drone war, like the drone arms might race. Be. No, we're getting smoked. But the thing is, we got to start taxing these fucking UFOs. No. They're coming into our airspace. That's a we're coming in policy for free. maker. <laughs> okay, well, let me add another layer to it. The defense bill requires the new office to work with the intelligence community to identify anything related to possible UFO sightings. Uh, if you want to hear a conundrum, uh, use it, what's the words? Uh, uh, military intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's an uh, oxymoron. Uh, to an be, oxymoron. To be fair, you, man. Right, you call me what? Yeah. <laughs> they well, do have some of the smartest minds in the world. Mm, you know, yes, I, yeah, no, I know. I know. I, I know. Let's add one. Let's add one more layer here. Let's make this a three-layer cake. Let's make this a fucking dulce leche. Oh, yes. I, hope you, I was hoping you were going to say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kirkpatrick may or may not be perfect for this job hmm. because he worked with the CIA in the past, which may or may not be a good thing. Hard to tell. Well, the thing is, is <laughs> very again, hard to tell. it is very hard to tell because, again, if you have worked for the CIA, you don't retire. Well, he's worked with the CIA. What does that even mean? Is he a caterer? I mean, it must be so horrible being a waiter for like one of these events at the CIA. Be like, do you want the mashed potatoes? I may or may not want the mashed potatoes. <laughs> do you want the me to put the Tell fucking me. mashed potatoes? <sighs> Have you heard about the issues with the fast food court at the CIA? <laughs> No, this is there is issues. I was reading a issues. little into this. Yeah, what well, issues? <laughs> well, it's a food court at the CIA. Uh-huh. So at this place where you go, where you go eat lunch, there are varying degrees of top secret clearances all at lunch Mm -hmm. that you have to figure out how to navigate. And that it's actually extremely difficult. Like, let's say you pop out for a smoke. So you don't get the spaghetti if you're, like, not top secret? It's it's more complicated than that. I want to unpack it for one of our episodes. But it's just this kind of, it's this basically, 
you there is a way for people to have to sit. There's like fights and shit because there are people that are having conversations in there that other people are not allowed to hear. There's also stuff like let's say you work at the fucking because I want to say they have like a Burger King like and they literally sure. there's like a and McDonald's on the side of the CIA. Like you're just a guy. You have clearance. You make hamburgers at the McDonald's inside of the food court of the CIA buildings. Mm -hmm. And so you walk outside for a smoke, like truly, you can't get back in the building. Like it's all these like weird human things. Well, you can't you go to... eight hours without a cigarette? Well, yeah. that's a really the big problem. I used to have a, I couldn't go eight hours. I know, but problem. you're still, you're half nicotine now. Well, he's yeah. deeply addicted. <laughs> yeah. But it, it is just I'm more on those, set three of the patch though. Oh, it's the just those one. fun little, the humanity of it, of like it trying to funny. deal with all these layers of top secret bullshit. And it's, again, you're just trying to get your fucking breakfast burrito. It's, yeah, it sounds like just like super smart prison. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, additionally, the office is mandated to create a process for people to share information, regardless of classification, without stigma. But perhaps most importantly, it mandates that Otto be fully staffed, Whoa. although the government definition of fully staffed might differ from the private sector. However, considering how disgustingly massive this defense bill is, some work might actually get done here. Hmm. But that's if Aro figures out the game as to how the people who actually benefit from this massive defense bill get their share. I think in the government, fully staffed means like um, when uh, Matt Gates adopted that full grown man to have sex with. <laughs> he was fully staffed at that point. Fully staffed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, since this new department is based in the DOD, Aro is focused on objects seen in and or near military bases, training areas, special use airspace, and other areas of interest. Man, quote, unquote, gonna areas get, of interest. He's going to get real annoyed real fast you yeah. let these you fall just run around these fucking <laughs> airplanes and shit man it is gonna be hard well, mm -hmm. we're in a new glory day for military and um creativity yeah so i wonder what they're gonna be seeing then because there's a bunch of new stuff that we have that is just like tangible well that's the thing man made that, this is historic these are historians they're looking at historical accounts they're not going okay. out they're not going out to the air force base and seeing what's on the tarmac now they're okay. pulling through old reports it's going back to 1945, and that's where we're going to arrive right now. Whoa. Cool. See, the reason why 1945 is so important. Because of the goddamn war. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It was coming to an the end. The goddamn war. Yeah, it's coming to an end. We, I mean, we're quickly going to go into another one. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's because the study commissioned in the defense bill is not starting with the 1947 Roswell crash, which is often seen as the first major on the ground incident in United States history. Yeah, that and the Kenneth Arnold, the, the his sighting where he said he saw those where the term saucers came from. But that's not on the ground. No. That's up in the air. I'm talking about crashes here. Okay. Rather, it's assumed that the study is starting with the far lesser known Trinity incident in which a UFO allegedly crashed near the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico just after the detonation of the world's first functional nuclear weapon. The problem was Bing Bong had a little too much to drink. Bing Bong was a little hungover. The Dare I say word, it's actually more dangerous to I drive hungover than drunk. I need you to say drunk. the B word and it, honestly quit it with the hard G. Bing Bong. Car, quit it with the hard G, okay? I'm a Bing Bong. I can say Bing Bong. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's a couple of flags here that show why this story is specifically very interesting. Yeah. It's because it literally, the crash happened on, a t like, essentially a missile testing site. Like it happened and near it, a missile testing site and it caused full on physical damage yeah. to things that wow. were like and people saw it. They went and they saw it and they, uh, say what you will about the crash. But there, there's something to it because it was weeks after the mm -hmm. first ever atomic test. And those were still just really our baby nukes. Yeah, those were just like infants and they were swaddled. Yeah, and they, they didn't were even cute. get to they didn't get to grow up. They weren't merved yet. They weren't adults. Yeah. Now, this is interesting because UFO researchers are well aware that UFOs have been drawn to nuclear testing sites, weapon storage, and power plants from almost the moment humanity harnessed the atom. Mm. From the Indian Point nuclear power plant in New York State, that's the Hudson Valley sightings, to the nuclear storage facilities in England, the Rendlesham Forest incident. Now, right. this is really in the realm of nuts and bolts UFOs. Yeah, so this very is, much so. This is giving some credence. Uh, I really do. This story specifically gives some credence to this idea that some of the phenomena is connected to this our fucking our nuclear programs yeah. and they're obsessed with it and, and like, this is like the MUFON base yeah yes. right? this yeah. is yes. like all nuts and bolts nothing woo -woo. yes yeah but that's also not to mention the encounters that may have occurred and say 
China. We oh, know yeah. almost nothing. nothing about UFO encounters in China. They must have happened, right? They had to have, of course. Oh, they're, yes. They're everywhere. Yeah, and I'll also admit that I'm not quite familiar what occurs in other nuclear states. Like, I don't know what happens in India or Pakistan. Right. I don't know what happens in France. Well, I actually know that I believe, well, France I know for a fact is very upfront about their UFO research shit yeah. because that's where Jacques Vallée yes. works out of. He works for the official French space navigation, co- which I just think they were, they're just sending bread to Mars. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing <laughs> over there. Uh, because I feel, but Jacques Vallée works for them and they openly research UFOs in the French mm-hmm. government. I think the French are probably the best at it because the one thing they love to do is relax oh, and yeah. they take it seriously. They, Did you see, they tried to raise their retirement age to 64 instead of 62 and it was like 2020 Minneapolis. <laughs> oh yeah, man. <laughs> it was like, people were like, absolutely not. I try to I wa- love the French. Oh yeah, man. No I one- got refused to walk away cappuccino. No, yeah. they just don't do it. You're supposed to sit in trails. I was like, I multitask. My life is a grind life. You don't <laughs> tell me to relax. I'm here. We saved your ass in World War II. It starts like that. You get into it that whole to, yeah. world. And then yeah, they yeah, punch that's... you in the fucking yeah, face yeah, yeah, because yeah. the French are tough as shit. Yeah, they punch you in the throat. Yeah, yeah. 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 Have no people on earth love rioting and protesting more than the French do. They I hold their immense... government... I have immense respect for them. Yeah, they hold their government accountable. 62, they just get to retire. They just get to walk away. (laughs) Yep. Great to the buttermills. Wow. What we do know is that witnesses in high-level positions in America and Russia have said that UFOs were able to control nuclear sites remotely, arming nuclear missiles or futzing with power plant operations, seemingly just because they can. Hmm. There's no, you, you can't, no one's been able to figure out the logic behind them coming in, flying over a fucking, flying over one of those sites in North Dakota, arming a nuclear missile, and then leaving. Uh, Jacques Vallée it. calls it a control system, which is a thing I'm still trying to understand. He says it comes from computer sciences, but this hmm. is this idea of like, when you watch years long set of phenomena, right, you can eventually begin to sort of chart it. And he talks about how UFOs work in waves. Like we talk about flaps. And he said, the reason why it does that is because it's trying to, if it is psychically generated, which he believes that half is that it's you, it's about us all trying to learn a lesson that we're not getting. Mm -hmm. And with the nuclear, that's where they, that that's the only one they're like, you see, that makes sense. Yeah. As it has to be also like a random test group too. But it's, I don't know. Like Jacques Vallée, sometimes I understand like I'm a valet head. I'm a valet girl. You're a valet girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, hang up. So I understand some people are not into it, but it, I, it is, it, it's interesting. I just don't know if we're ready, man. I was flipping through the channels and Ben Carson was on uh, Fox News. So I was listening because I just got to like hear what that Morin has to say. He calls it Q theory. He says many people that uh, pers- or that uh, subscribe to Q theory will say this. Oh, no, so no, I no, don't no, think no, we're no. ready. No, no, we're no, not no, ready. No, no, I feel no. like we, I feel like we were more ready like twenty years ago. Very I think, much so. I think they're gonna. Uh, we we are. I say we're real lucky if they're not full on nuts and bolts UFOs. We're real lucky. Yeah. If yeah. it's a psychic phenomenon, I would argue we were more ready thirty years ago. Yeah. Well, they should have the just come the 30s, then. Yeah. It yeah. should have been there then. Yeah, because yeah. they can they could have gotten a us. bop it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bop it. <laughs> that yeah. would have saved yeah. us. Twist it. Yeah. Pull it. That's my Fuck mother. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to the Trinity crash, it seems like a UFO was simply investigating the site where the first nuclear detonation had occurred just one month prior. And this craft accidentally crashed in the deserts of New Mexico. Mm. Now, today's source is the new Jacques Vallée book, Trinity. The best kept secret. Not oh. anymore. Trinity is the best kept secret. Perfect. Cool. Honestly, his accent is very thick. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, almost impossible to understand him without subtitles. I fall Great. asleep. He makes me fall asleep. Yeah. Good. The That's books. what people say about our show. Yeah. <laughs> the book's a bit of a mess mm. uh, because it required a lot of padding to make this story into a book because mm. it's not a it's not a long story. No. But it still gives valuable new information on a crash that I've only heard mentioned in passing for years. And that's mostly just because the UFO is kind of shaped weird. Yeah, it's a funny shape, which mm-hmm. they thought was really fun. And also the struggle to hear Jacques Vallée say avocado over and over again. <laughs> it, it, it is maddening. Uh, well, as far as where this crash occurred. <laughs> oh, okay. oh. Is it avocado? Avocado? Oh, <laughs> sounds tasty. 
Now, as far as where this crash occurred, it was 18 miles north of the Trinity site outside the small town of San Antonio, New Mexico, at a ranch worked by a man named Faustino Padilla. Ooh. Faustino had a son named Jose, age nine at the time. And Jose had a friend named Remy Baca. And it was Jose and Remy who were the main witnesses here. And they're seven and nine years old. But there were also certainly adults who witnessed the craft on the ground before the military took it away. Okay. Now, the Padilla family were among the many Americans who were adversely affected by the detonation of the first functioning nuclear weapon. We just did it out loud, man. We just did it on top of where a bunch of people were living. Yeah, right in the middle of New Mexico. Right. That was the Trinity test. Yeah. Jose Padilla's mother, Inez, for example, she was looking out the window when the blast occurred, just just looking out the window. They, They didn't tell anybody that they were doing this. The flash blinded her in one eye. They give you a month heads up. If they're going to start filming something in your neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. If they're going to change the parking, gonna, yeah. they put up a sign like three weeks ahead By of time. By the way, just so you know, we're going to be filming girls here. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't mention this to anyone that was no. living. Be like, if no. you're going to think about going on vacation this weekend, great weekend to well, do it. It does seem as if, uh, number one, they didn't care. No. Um, and they didn't know, maybe. That's what we'll talk a little bit when we eventually do our Manhattan Project series. Like, like, But they lied about not knowing yeah. about what the radiation would do. Yeah, dude. And they didn't want to tell anybody that they were doing it because it was really, really secret. But well, except it was a really big explosion. <laughs> so it's very yeah. difficult to hide. It's not like a thing. It's like a thing you think you do like underground or like something you do like, which we eventually did. We put it out in the oceans and irradiated the oceans and we made mm-hmm. everybody's favorite SpongeBob. Uh, oh, SpongeBob. I thought you were going to say the Good. bloop. I thought you were going to say Godzilla. Cool. No, SpongeBob. Technically that's the, the kind of what they're saying is that's the underlying kind of subconscious storyline of SpongeBob oh. is that they were all created by nuclear waste. Oh, interesting. No kidding. Yeah. Well, huh. well, Remy Baca remember that after the Trinity test, a dust that had the consistency of snow or flour oh, covered good. the desert. Later, it was discovered that this material was highly radioactive. Yes. Fallout, and I- right? Yeah, and isotopes were found in cow milk, game, chickens, eggs. It was in everything. Don't worry, the government cares. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I, I think that they could... Like, just deduce that nothing good was going to happen. Well, yeah, even if they didn't know anything, what I don't know what bad is going to happen, but we know nothing good. You know how they tell? They literally go and they look at that wind sock. That is the complete truth. They're like, let's see where that wind sock's going. All right. It's kind of going that way. It's fine. I'll kind of go over that river over there. It'll go over. That's fine. Rivers move so fast. Yeah. Right? Rivers move so fast. It'll well, eat it up. Well, we're going to discover this later on. We're going to look into this later on because we're, we've are we got a big series in the making right now. Uh, but I don't know if they knew about radioactive winds. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they knew that like when you explode an atomic bomb. They had bomb, to figure the, something bad was going to happen. I don't think. I think that the oh. most you can say that is good is willful ignorance. I think the most you can say that they just went like, oh, well, hope, we'll figure it out. Well, we'll figure that out. You know, just yeah, like, it's you like, know, they didn't, like all the people fucking, you know, getting really sick in the plutonium mine. In Washington State or the plutonium yeah. factories, they might have just and they knew radioactive, like they knew that Not radium. Yeah, they knew that radium was poisonous for decades. Before it turned that. the entire town of Springfield yellow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Mm, Simpsons, like, funny. Uh, hey, stuff. that's right. Ooh, wow. Springfield. Yeah, yes. but they knew like there was actually they used to sell like radium water way back in the, like the early 1900s because they thought that radium was good for you. It looked cool. And, until all those ladies that were uh, painting little uh, radium numbers on watches so World War I soldiers could see that what time it was in the trenches, uh, their faces started literally falling off. That good. <laughs> all I know is I need to have a small rock star in our future <laughs> break. Now, this is full of... Uh, Oh, 14% radium. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's why you have a healthy glow about it. <laughs> yes. uh, there's this incredible story of one of the radium ladies, one of the girls who painted, like, she was licking the tip after every single number oh, that she put on. No. They didn't, because it tastes, because they're like, oh, it's like calcium. But yeah, like radium actually goes into your, it does act like calcium, except it goes into your bones and it lives there. It never leaves. So this woman, like, she had this huge tumor on her face. She's fucking going, and the doctor went to examine her jaw and it fucking just, came off in his That's hand. That's not it good, just went, dude. <laughs> I'm just going to say no job's worth it. No, right? no, 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 no. Except for being a TV personality. Yeah. Mm, that is worth and it. And then after all of these ladies died, of course, the company that ran, that, that made the radium watches came out and said, you know what? We tried doing a good thing by employing all of these handicapped women. And it turns out they just put their, they put their, our goodwill, 
back on us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. They seriously, their, their fucking excuse was they was already like that. Yeah, like, uh, like, oh, yeah they were already God. jacked up. <laughs> you mean, yeah, it's, yeah. We hired a bunch of fucked up shit people, right? right. And so now they're all going to be yeah. hours all mad yeah. about it. Yeah. And it's just like, well, the one would tell you about that. Sorry, bro. I'm wow. French. Uh, he went to Jared's. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that no civilians in the area, when they did the Trinity test, no civilians in the area were told about any of this. They knew that it happened. Oh, my After God. After it happened, the only people who got compensation were the so-called atomic veterans. Yep. They were Marines who were placed in trenches only two miles away from the blast. Those men eventually developed one or more of 21 different cancers, making it the Camp Lejeune of its day. You know what I wow. really prefer is I love cookies and cream cancer. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite. I like a cookies yeah. and cream. I like a praline and hazelnut. Yeah. Oh, wow. Very fancy. Yeah. Live from your grave. But as far as the UFO crash went, it occurred on August 16th, 1945, exactly one month after the Trinity test and exactly a week after the second atomic bomb was dropped on Japan. Because now we have extras and we got to blow them off. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. dude, from Trinity to uh, Hiroshima is like two weeks. Um, Why didn't they just go to Japan and see what happened? Uh, because isn't that... We weren't the, allowed. I feel oh, you like mean the we, aliens? No, us. Like, why didn't the U.S. government... Drop, obviously, after we dropped the bombs, why didn't they just go see what happens after you drop a bomb? Why continue to do the test on civilians in New Mexico? Oh, they didn't. Well, I mean, well, they actually did more tests in Monument Valley after okay. that. Um, but that was just to get bigger and bigger bombs. That's yeah, let's we make were, them big bombs and we were, show everybody we're working on. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's what we were talking about before the show. Is like Monument Valley. A lot of the people who worked on those old John Ford Westerns, uh, they all got cancer because there yeah. was still dust. so much radioactive dust in Monument Valley uh, after the test. Still safer than working with an actor that shot somebody. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> Remember, Marlin, remember that guy? He directly murders you. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the day of the crash, Jose and Remy were riding horses to check on a cow that was about to calf. They tracked the cow to a rocky area, hitched their horses, and continued on foot. And after finding the cow, they were having a nice little lunch of tortillas and apples Aww. when a thunderstorm blew in. Hmm. Along with the thunder, though, they heard a loud bang that sounded entirely different from a thunderclap. And these guys are live next to a missile test range. So mm. they've heard a lot of different bangs. They really do yeah. think uh, on some level they know a different bang mm -hmm. because they just watched the world's biggest bang. Yep. And it coated all of them with, with powdery death. Yeah. Yeah, I do want to know what the realtor was like. So anyway, it's a really good deal. It's super cheap, right? Well, why? <laughs> Don't even worry just about just it. Shut your fucking mouth. Don't okay? even worry about it. <laughs> But curious, the boys investigated the area where the sound originated, and they found a long, sizable, foot-deep gouge in the ground that was warm to the touch. Plants nearby were burning, smoke filled the air, and when the boys followed the gouge, they found a large, solid object. Obviously, whatever had crashed there. By Remy's recollection, the bang was similar to what he heard during the nuclear test a month prior. But with details like that, it's important to note that we're dealing with the memories of a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old who were told 60 years later. And, and they were also next to an atomic bomb release. I feel like there, yeah. there has to be, that has to shadow most of the things that you will d do for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, also, if you live next to like an airport, you don't know if it's a 747 or if a new if it's a new one of those bus planes mm -hmm. or whatever. I mean, I don't know. They hear bangs all day. I couldn't really differentiate. Well, unless you look in here for bangs and look in here for planes, because some people sit in there all day and they just go, look, hey, it's 747. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's a 797. My friend, you just got hired at the uranium factory. <laughs> no, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah. I go right in there. Look at them. Someone's glowing in there. Someone's cast cute. Thank you. But nevertheless, just because weird shit is seen and heard by a child, that doesn't automatically mean that the weird shit didn't happen. Just right. like you'd listen to the words of a child who happened to be present at the scene of a crime. Now, Remy and Jose were smart enough to not approach the craft, but luckily they had a pair of binoculars. Ooh, Looking fun kids. Super fun kids. Oh, yeah, yeah man. You're out there in this the This is the best adventure of, in the world. It's awesome. I'm jealous. Yeah, there's a seven, nine-year-old with a couple of horses and binoculars and then a UFO crashes. That's Incredible. awesome. They also just let a seven and nine-year-old just out there with a bunch of horses. Oh, yeah, they I still wasn't do that. They I still wasn't do that. allowed yeah, outside that. of my yard. Because you grew up in <laughs> Queens and your father was a cop surrounded by mafioso. <laughs> yeah. It'd be it's like if I could drive a car at nine, right? I could drive a car at nine. But I mean, a lot. No, I, I could drive a car at 11. 
But isn't a horse harder than a car? Much, much harder. I, yeah. think, your, I think your mom just had made you have so much spaghetti so it would weigh you down so you wouldn't get kidnapped. <laughs> I think, yeah, she was just excited to make me half dough. <laughs> <laughs> I was her experiment. Henry Noki Zabrowski. <laughs> My body is different now and it makes me sad. You look good. No, you do. You we, we, had a, we had like a 20 minute long conversation before the show. You, you look great. Yeah, you, you. yeah, you've been coming. Yeah, you look good. I'm you melting. Need, you're not melting. <laughs> I got four bellies. Who cares? Yeah, okay, it's fine. More bellies. It's fine. So do fucking ants. And look at them. They have all movies made of them. <laughs> Whoa, ants. <laughs> ants. Oh, with my favorite comedian, Woody Allen. <laughs> God, I miss him. Where's he been? <laughs> he needs to. He, he, well, he's <laughs> he's got it. He's he's glowing. Tim and Alec are on vacation right now. Yeah. And yeah, they were talking about yeah. how you say, how you set molest. Mm. Uh-huh. You make a molest Woody there Allen. Mm. I'm sure they have a fun mm. time together. <laughs> well, looking through the lenses, the boys could see that the object was shaped like an avocado. Oh my God. And which was an appropriate cultural reference for the boys. Absolutely. But the object also had a hole on the side. The craft was also emitting a high-pitched sound, which Remy compared to that of a dying rabbit. <coughs> known far and wide to be one of the worst sounds on Earth. What does a dying rabbit sound like? <coughs> a lot like that. Yeah, I've, I've done it on the show before. People yeah, know. People I know. know. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Yes, indeed. But what was even stranger is that the boys claimed to have seen little creatures climbing out of the ship's hole. From Remy's memory, wow. the four-foot-tall creatures looked sort of like praying mantises. They had big, bulgy eyes, gray skin, and needle-thin arms. Jose, however, described it slightly different, although he also described them as insectoid in appearance. Well, fucking Eddie Redmayne's. Interesting. <laughs> this is fucking little pieces of shit. Don't shoehorn your hate for Eddie Redmayne <laughs> into this. Jose said that the aliens had pear-shaped heads that were, in his words, too big. Cool. They looked like fire ants standing up. That's what he said. So got fire ants on one side, praying mantises on the other. And I see little baby grays I see all the time being described as Mm insect-like in their behavior. Yeah, they were again gray. Of course, they both described them as gray. Uh, But their eyes were sideways teardrops. They weren't bulging. The the two boys saw that differently. Uh, Jose also said that their mouths were baby mouths. That's how he described it. The noses were two tiny holes. They had tiny ears and no hair. Pretty standard gray. Yes. But you could also, I mean, you say like, wow, he saw that in 1945. But in reality, he told this story in the 2000s, which meant that he would have seen alien grays since then. It was ubiquitous in the 90s. Everybody saw, like, just the alien gray head in the 90s. But we will say, we have, like, they were forced to keep this quiet. They didn't want to talk about this for a long time. They did not want to come out with the story. Uh, And they, but there's something to the idea of that if you saw an alien, if you did see one, and then you saw one later, you'd be like, that's a guy. Yeah. I feel like it's a formative experience. Mm-hmm. Like if yeah. you do see, if this is real and you saw a crashed object, you saw it be like, I feel like this would be one of those memories that would yeah. stick with you. Yeah. Right. It would be like if you saw something as a child and then all of a sudden that alien was going to become a Supreme Court justice and you'd be like, now I remember. Yes. Mm-hmm. That would be incredible. Yeah. Ooh, aliens on the Supreme Court. Why not? Well, let's see. I mean, they might, <laughs> they already are on the Supreme Court. It would be so much better. But what's most interesting about Jose and Remy's experience is that it shares a fair amount with the aerial school incident that occurred decades later and an ocean away in South Africa during the 90s. Like the kids at aerial school, which we covered last fall, I believe. Yes. Jose and Remy had slightly different perceptions of the creatures. They observed that the creatures glided instead of walked. Like they're not real. Mm -hmm. And they also claimed that the creatures transferred a feeling of of pure sorrow. The kids at aerial school also said that emotions were transferred, like they were radiating them. Well, because they just crashed a really expensive plane, perhaps. Honestly, yeah, and they're worried about insurance. So they're just like, oh, (laughs) shit. Oh, my premium is going up. I really bing bong this. (laughs) I bing bong. This is why they call us bing bong, bing bong. And this is all pretty close to what the kids at aerial school in South Africa described 50 years later. Now, one may say that these images were optical illusions. You might even say that the feelings are some sort of weird, misremembered, and misplaced trauma. Remember, these kids had seen the world's first nuclear explosion a month prior. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. But from what the two men said many years later, when they were finally interviewed about their experience, they said that they watched the creatures for hours until it got dark. Then they went home, sat there with their binoculars, watched these creatures walk around doing weird alien shit. 
just literally screaming at each other. Yeah, go Loretta, like, I yeah. told you not to drive, this Loretta. This is what happens when you distract oh, me. God <laughs> dang it. Furthermore, the boys returned to the crash site a couple of days later to find that the avocado-shaped craft was still there, undiscovered by government agencies. This wasn't just like a fleeting experience. They measured the craft by stepping it. And they determined that it was between 25 and 30 feet long, wow. about 14 feet high. It's similar to what we estimate some UFOs in those new videos taken by the Navy and the Air Force. It's, it, that's about the size we estimate them to be. Wow. It is interesting. Some of them, at least. Because yeah. Raytheon has now come forward. They're the guys that develop the cameras for, the, for our battleships and shit. And basically, they're designed to look at jets. And they're, they're designed to look for enemy military technology. But they're trying to come out and say, like, listen. When you send us these, what you needed for these cameras, we didn't develop them to look at UFOs. So there's actually limited data that you can extract from these videos that is actually credible. Now Raytheon is apparently starting to get instructions as to like wow. what to look for, like how wow. to build a camera that can see a UFO. You'll be able to do it then. Mm -hmm. Now, after the boys returned to the site, they decided to tell Remy's father, Faustino, about what they'd found. So Faustino and his buddy Eddie, a local police officer, they took a ride out to the site and brought the kids along. So cool. This is a great day. <sighs> yeah, this is like a couple, this is like two days. Like, this is a great weekend. This is awesome. Yeah. Well, while they were driving out, of course, Faustino and Eddie, they're like, we don't see it. We don't see it. And the kids are like, oh, I swear it's out there. It's right over there. And they found that the closer they got to it, the more visible it became. Yeah, he was like oh. fucking in on cloak mode. Yeah. Now, once they arrived at the site, Faustino and Eddie told the boys to stay in the car. And allegedly, the adults got out and went inside the craft. Whoa! They were only gone for 10 minutes. But when they returned, Jose and Remy said that they were almost like different people. And they told the kids to never tell anyone what they'd seen there ever. They said what was weird is that you walked into this avocado shaped craft but somehow it had a flat ground and it had all of these things along the wall. So we we were talking about a little bit before the show. It is interesting the dreamlike quality a lot of the even just the tech the way they describe it in these scenarios. And this is what Faustino and Eddie described to the kids. Yes. Okay. And there there's something about like, because the way the aliens glide, quote unquote aliens glide, the way that it sits there, because it's it's kind of almost cartoony in a way. It's egg shaped. They say avocado, but it's basically shaped like an egg. And it has like a kind of a cartoony hole in it because it hit a radar, to, like a radar pole, like it, like it which it caused damage to, which, which is also completely real. But it's weird. You go in and it's like a half done craft. Mm. It's all kind of half between our world and something mm. else. It's something that there is th components, quote unquote, missing. What would be in a thing that would make a thing move? That would like had no steering wheels, no dashboards, no plate, no cockpit. Like it, like it's just like it's very interesting. I love that type of shit. Yeah. There's something about their connection. If it is indeed real, the nuts and bolts aspect is indeed real. These creatures just kind of live in a thing that might also be kind of half alive. Also, Henry, when all of this is uh, said and done, and you fully become a ufologist and everything falls apart, mm. and your wife leaves yes. you and you're dead broke, and Marcus mm. and I won't help you because we're busy. You already got yeah, I'm toxic. Got, yeah, 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 we're, I'm we're toxic. done. Yeah. Uh, you can headline at Cockpit. <laughs> and it is, it's a fantastic new club in Florida. It's inside of a Delta flight. <laughs> yes. And you can do it while in the you travel. Yeah. Unbeknownst <laughs> to the other flyer. Hey, hey, you don't want to hear you shouldn't? You shouldn't? Yeah. Let me say that. Oh, it's brown, huh? Brown, huh? huh. I oh, love crazy. bathroom funny crowd guy. work. Mm. <laughs> Well, upon returning to town, Eddie presumably reported the crash to the authorities. Somebody had to. And seeing as how this was literally just a month after World War II ended. Literally a month. Wow. You know, people were still pretty fucking jumpy. Oh, about, they didn't get like, over it in 30 days? Yeah. Oh, they <laughs> yeah. were just... That, we had yeah. a whole... Do you remember when... The, we'll cover the story about the 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 uh, weird fascist dude trying to overthrow FDR and all this type of shit. Yeah. We had weird shit on American <laughs> soil that was happening. Yeah, I mean, people thought very much thought that there was, like, you know, enemy craft, enemy ships, a, a, any kind of, like, enemy weaponry. Because Pearl Harbor, you know, I mean, shit, there were Japanese ships off of the coast of California. Right. Like, I mean, there were, sh there were German ships in the Atlantic Ocean, you know, People are jumpy as fuck. Still roar. Mm -hmm. But before the craft was taken away, Jose and Remy returned for souvenirs, as of children are wont to of do. Course. Oh, of course. Maybe know. they had a little shop in there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh sundries. Nice. <laughs> well, one piece they picked up and kept was a piece of aluminum that would return to its original position after they folded it, a sort of memory metal. Sound familiar? Very Ooh. familiar. Very common. 
That piece was used to repair a windmill and was lost. But that was far from the only thing the boys huh. took. Yeah, they just took the stuff out of it. And again, memory metal is what we saw during the Roswell crash, which mm -hmm. was fake using the fake, fake. fucking uh, weather balloon fake weather that they balloon. put into the photo op. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jose and Remy also claim to have recovered a large amount of fibrous string. I love saying fibrous, fibrous string. Fibrous string. That's very fun. Yeah, they described it as spider webby or kind of like angel hair pasta. Don't and do me. I'm hungry. Yeah. And Jacques Vallée speculates that this may have been fiber optic cable. But then he was cool. also incorrect because fiber optic cable is something that light travels through and it only goes through one end to the other. But this shit glowed in the dark. Yeah, because that's the thing is that it glowed in the dark. You know what they did with it? What? They used it as Christmas decorations. Yeah, they put it on their well, tree. <laughs> For like That's decades, perfect. they would, but it would go in a box and come out December 1st and then go back in and they used it for a few decades and then threw it out. I mean, that's all that we're going to do with this stuff. We're just yeah. going to use it for mundane, everyday activity. 5G. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just, what, what do you mean? Go, 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 go. 5G. What, <laughs> but what do you mean by that? You're just looking at me. You're just giving me the side eye. You just said 5G and gave me a side eye. What am I supposed to infer from that? <laughs> Nanotechnology. All right. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that they didn't throw out or repurpose everything. Jose also recovered what he thought was a spinning metal bracket from the UFO site and he kept it. Okay. Yeah. He just took it out thing. He called it his treasure. Mm -hmm. It is treasure. Comparable to nothing I've ever seen. Because there are pictures of this thing. The bracket is 12 inches long, weighs about a pound, and has holes for fastening. It's super wheeled. Yeah, okay. because wheel wheel. Because don't connect to nothing. Don't do nothing. Yeah, don't do nothing. And, you know, 12 inches long, only a pound? You know, that's pretty intense, man. Yeah. And when, yeah. And when Jacques Vallée analyzed it, he found that it was made of Aluminum. I know that. Aluminum. Okay. It's like most material found at UFO crash sites are made of aluminum, which isn't all that weird because a lot of most of our planes are made of aluminum. Well, yes. Jacques Vallée talks a little bit about because, you know, Art's Arts were, was the famed pieces of UFOs that Art Bell supposedly had on him that he yes. supposedly was was given to the To the Stars Academy that Tom DeLonge's hard at work at right now. Right he's now. really he's he's figuring out what right now. But we now call these meta materials. And uh, we Jacques Vallée has some of these meta materials from a uh, basically a UFO exploded above a beach in Brazil and all of these chunks of shiny metal came down and he got one and he's basically it's pure magnesium mm -hmm. but he said what's weird it's again is that it's not that it's it's all earthbound metal it's all stuff that can be found here but it's the way that they put it together it's sort mm -hmm. of like sadly it's like it's the Bill Murray no human would ever stack <laughs> books like this but right. it's, it's true it's like they are too pure like you'd have to like go and get it made at a lab for it to be as pure as it is it just again it's just weird yeah i mean i feel like the metals of a of another universe might be similar to ours right who knows have we yeah. found any unique hyper unique metals on well, mars yet unobtainium that's technically real and not real that's what bob lazar talks about there's yeah. like the element like 151. I think that just might be a rum bar. There's another, it's like element 151. It's yeah. one of these numbers. It's like, again, it's, it, it lasts for a second in a lab and then it goes away. Yeah. I think there might be unknown elements out there, but I don't know if there's, but you know, meteors fall to the, uh, you know, the earth all the time. And yeah. I don't know if they've ever found an unknown element in a meteor. Um, you know, like there's some meteors out there, like there's a meteor out there that's made of solid gold. You know, it's crazy. We yeah, got they to said get it. it. We're talking about the ultimate heist. Yeah. The ultimate heist. But then everyone is like, then we'd all be rich. And I'm like, no, they just change it. No, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, all just of make... a sudden, p piss is currency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but inevitably, three days after the crash, a military man showed up and actually asked permission to install a gate in the fence around the Padilla Ranch so the military could recover an experimental weather balloon. Fuck you! Yeah. Fuck you! I, mean, I can tell the weather by looking outside. <laughs> I know it actually. I do knew, do know that they do need a lot of weather balloons because it is a missile missile weather testing site, and they need to check out like the immediate weather sure. while yeah. they're doing it. But still, whatever. Well, they, they have. I mean, they have that excuse. It shows you they have yeah. that excuse in their back pocket when Roswell occurs two years later. Uh, right. You see, uh, we love the weather. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> that's not the major uh, problems that they're uh, interested in. Yeah, yeah. We talk about the weather all the time. Mm. No, that's kind of an it is interesting weather patterns. Yeah. Now so. yeah, they are very in meteorology. Meteorology. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so most meteorology is fucking made up. It's really not. They <laughs> and work so they really work hard at it. After the site was cleaned up by a couple of young recruits, they just sent a couple of dudes out there to yep. fucking sweep up, and the craft was taken away to parts unknown. 
Probably to White Sands Missile Range. That's the thing. And there it becomes an atomic secret versus a regular secret. And that means it goes away. Mm-hmm. I also think that's the smart way to do it. They're new recruits. They don't think that they would even be given a job with full responsibility. Mm-hmm. They also don't know enough to give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. then they just that's the way to do it. blow their brains out somewhere in a parking lot. We <laughs> don't know if that happened. It's not American History X. Yeah, we'll see. Well, Remy and Jose took Faustino Padilla's advice and they didn't speak of the UFO again. Even after the Roswell crash, even after that happened two years later and only 150 miles away, they didn't talk about it to anybody else. They didn't talk to each other about it. They remembered it, but they were just fucking mums the word. They understood okay. that this was dicey. Mm-hmm. And by the mid-1950s, both boys had moved away from San Antonio, New Mexico, and they didn't reconnect until 2002. Aww. And then when they reconnected, it was like through a, like Ancestry.com or something yeah. like that. They finally revisited what they'd seen as children. It's like, do you remember that? You like, remember we saw a fucking UFO? <laughs> cool. So they were in their 70s then. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And somehow an ufologist named Paolo Harris heard of the story and conducted extensive interviews in 2010. And Jacques Vallée joined in to help write the book in 2020. And had it not been for the efforts of these two men, this incident would have been lost, which I think begs the question we always have. Namely... How many of these incidents have occurred over the decades in which the witnesses told no one? Hell, there might be a fucking UFO in an abandoned barn in Nevada or fucking Utah or New Mexico or something just waiting to be found. And I feel like that's a J.J. Abrams movie. We're just getting (laughs) further and further away from understanding the past as well. I mean, you have DeSantis who doesn't want to teach African-American history, a.k.a. history. That's on the chopping block. I don't know when we're going to get to UFO history. Yeah, that's George (laughs) Orwell, man. Human history. He who controls the present controls the past. You controls the past controls the future. Yeah, bro. Getting yeah. fucking mind blown here, dude. I also think that you know, there is a reason why they are starting to put money into these programs. Mm. I really do think they must have something. Yeah. That is my most truly, I know it's maybe funny to say, my most fringe belief <laughs> is that is that they have an object that that's they not, have something that one of these stories is real and they got something in a hanger. That's not your most fringe belief. What do you think is my <laughs> most fringe oh, belief? We cannot say that. <laughs> I know what it is. Yeah. You probably don't even know what it is. Yeah. Am I a mystery to myself? <laughs> Now, according to Valet, government teams returned to the Padilla Ranch crash site in 1953 to scrub the site clean. Finally, they get someone competent on there. All right. Oddly, though, in 2017, in something that sounds like a plot detail in The Invisibles, Valet claims that someone planted poisonous vegetation on the spot where the craft came to a stop. Particularly, they planted cockleburs and deadly nightshade, hmm. which almost sounds like someone is mixing science and the occult. Or perhaps someone just believes that there's some sort of connection between UFOs and something a little more witchy. Okay. Well, they don't want you digging there. Mm-hmm. They don't want cattle going in there. Mm-hmm. Right, right? So they made it poisonous. <laughs> I guess that would work. I don't know. I mean, I guess that would be good. Well, lest ye forget, the U.S. military has in the past employed occultists. Oh, yeah, man. The fucking Washington DC is a pentagram, dog. Mm-hmm. Temple of Set founder Michael Aquino is the biggest example, of course. Although I cannot stress enough that my mention of occultists in the government here is not in any way an endorsement or a reference to QAnon. It is merely Fact. Q it, well, theory. There's also a <laughs> flip here because one day we will do our occultists and in the intelligence community stories because there is like, then some talk about all together, all of those scenes. Mm-hmm. Like data aggregator like groups for the CIA and the NSA. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But to further argue the point that these were planted intentionally, this nightshade, these cockle burrs, they were new to Valet in 2017. Whereas before, when he'd gone out to the site, there was nothing there. And he only found them within a 30-foot radius of the crash site and nowhere else nearby. Okay. Now, Trinity is by no means the only site of a UFO crash, nor did UFO crashes end with Roswell. Plenty of crashes have been witnessed since, and even as far back as 1897, a UFO allegedly flew over the town of Aurora, Texas, hit a large piece of equipment, and exploded into a shower of aluminum and silver debris. Is that wow. now the one? Because I know Lubbock also had a... The Lubbock Lights. Yeah, the yeah, Lubbock Lights. the 50s. Yeah, yeah but that, that was, was a- just more of a sighting. It was a sighting. Yeah, it was a it was a mass sighting. But yeah, that was one of J. Allen Hynek's uh, early 
discoveries, I believe. Cool. Or not discoveries, but studies. Yeah. But in the post-nuclear world, the crashes, or at least reports of crashes, increased significantly. At each site, metallic fragments were found, and most commonly, those fragments were discovered to be made of aluminum or magnesium. But it's also huh. the evidence, the physical evidence is so weird because it's dreamy quality as well. Like mm -hmm. they talk about like the indentations in the ground of these UFOs and when they land and that they are obviously extremely heavy, but then they can lift up without making a noise. Again, if you believe witnesses and then the, the concept of like when they do leave stuff behind, it's not like a plane crash mm -hmm. because plane crashes like you remember when they did the rebuild when there was a big TWA flight that crashed 800. and they like there was that whole like it was a warehouse like yeah. filled with stuff you remember the one that was shot down yes yes now we know that for a fact Long right Long Island right uh, and so well, we, not for a fact but we know it we know we it we know it yeah but it's wink, not a fact wink. Yeah. that was trippy that was real life men in black stuff oh, yeah. it is but it is weird to think that that like that thing can crash and just like so you have to, it's like the poultry evidence it's such a small amount of evidence yeah. and then it goes into these dubious areas mm -hmm. and so while the trinity ufo incident may not be the most well-known crash 1945 may eventually come to be known as the point in which ufos became truly interested in the human species and then it was jody arias <laughs> <laughs> that butthole brings a lot of aliens to the yard however it could also be that the study starts in 1945 because it's a nice round number Ooh. and it, it has round? nothing to do with the Trinity crash. It's, it's, it's an odd number. No, it's, yeah, because it's one, nine, it's, it's, it's ten, no, it's one, a, nine, I didn't say nine, even four, five, it's a round but number. It's like one plus nine is ten. Be... Fives and zeros are the roundest numbers. Technically, it's a really good number because one plus nine is ten, four, four plus five is nine, nineteen, right? So it's ten plus nine, it's nineteen, one plus nine, that's ten, that's actually one. It's a really good numerical number. I thought if it number. was even, it would be round. No, no, no. Round numbers are, are physically round numbers that appear to be round because, you know, zero's got the big, it's round. It's you sell o. more, you sell more if you, if you make something nine ninety five versus $10. Yeah. It's nine ninety nine. dollars no, 995 is better. 995 is better. Nine, yeah, because it's a nice round number. No, because people, no, because the study is that you don't even really see the nine. The only numbers he sees is on the roulette table. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But for the answer as to whether or not yes. 1945 is just a nice round number, or if it has something to do with the Trinity site, only time and Otto will tell. Ah, uh, Doctor wow. K. Doctor K. All Go right, Doctor K. K. Our life is in your hands, Doctor K. Is our life's in your hands, Doctor K? Our life and is in your our, hands. And this wow. is the sound our life is making right now. <laughs> That's a dying rabbit. This is a dying rabbit noise. I told you. Why is it wasting all of its final moments like that? Because it's trying to call other rabbits in to help? No. I don't want to hear that anymore. Yeah. No. Actually, when I was a, a kid, that's what you, um, if you're out, God damn it, please turn it off. <laughs> it's you sad. Can turn it off. You don't like it this It sounds movie? like the death rattle of a child. Turn it off. God damn it. Please turn it off. <laughs> He's okay, going to explode. You. That yeah. sound is called social media. Yeah. No, no, no. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's, it brings back... So many fucking memories because, like, back when I was a kid, they would oh. when you're out like hunting. If you have to like hunt coyotes, if you got a coyote problem or something like that, is that you get the fucking sound of a rabbit dying and you put it on a loudspeaker and you play it at night. And then if you do that, then it attracts scavengers like coyotes, and you just sit there and just. Jesus I would Christ. rather listen to Jonestown. Yeah. I'd rather hear the Jonestown tapes. Yeah, I don't. Yep. And I don't like death. In animals. So. Not anymore. I don't like, like death in general for yeah. for most people. No, nah, man. Sometimes well, just, you got to fucking embrace the fucking Reaper. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do, man. I'm afraid of the Reaper, man. I feel like if everything goes well, your last word is like, oh. No, we've talked no. about how sad are. It's going to be, oh, shit. Yeah. No, I just don't want my last words to be wait. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah no, that's that. true. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I think well, my, last, my last sentence would be like, get on with it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah well, you're surrounded by a group of yeah. yelling get villagers. On, yeah, or, I want to die on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's a good one, yeah. Uh, can you make it a jumbo, please? <laughs> that's how I'm going to die. There you go. The next customer that orders a jumbo, I'm going to shoot, shoot the fucking, him in the uh, fucking head. May I, <laughs> May I have a jumbo, please? Uh, this was uh, really fun. I'm glad that we're getting into the UFO disclosure. Next week, we're going to be doing some. We're going to get back into some old timey history that is going to make you not happy. Mm. I'm very well. It's going to make us happy. It's going to make us happy. As let's just say, uh, I'll give you a hint. Donner party on the water. I can't wait. <laughs>
Oh, my God. I can't wait, because guess what? It is the Donner Party on the Water. It is a BYOH. We covered Bring something. Bring your own human. There you go. <laughs> we did, fun. What was the one that we covered that was on the water with the military? The USS, USS Indianapolis. Ooh. Also yeah. fucked up. It's kind of a combination of the Indianapolis and uh, the Donner Party. That's actually how, that's oh. a pretty good way of describing it. I can't God. wait. I yeah. really, really can't wait. But Dang. thank you guys so yeah. much. Uh, thank you for going to see Page 7 of Whizbrew. they have been having a really good time on tour. It's a great show. I saw it here in Los yes. Angeles at the Urban Room. Uh, it's fucking great show. So go out and Super check it out. Super funny. Um, and uh, I don't think we have anything else to plug except no, for the last comic book on the left, Volume 2, is finally shipping to you. Yes, it's finally shipping. It is We've getting seen to you. pictures of it. Uh, we're getting it out there. Uh, we, uh, oh. It's happening. The Thank next you one, so when much. we do the next one, it is literally, we've already spoke with the publishers and they're totally into it too with Z2, is that it is, we are putting it out when it's ready to come out. So you're going to make sure you got it. Mm -hmm. And you're, we're very excited because Volume 2, it's got a lot of great shit in it. it volume does. 3 already has a bunch of really yeah. cool art and work in it that we can, I want you to see. Yeah, I've already written a story for Volume 3. I've written an alien story for Volume oh. 3 that will be continued in uh, Volume 4. And we've got some amazing artists working on uh, variant uh, artwork as well. I, that We got one guy, not going to announce it yet, even though I've seen it, that it's going to blow your fucking mind. Who Stan we got. Lee. <laughs> Stan Lee. We dug up his bones. We and that we're going to teach bones. him how to write. Yeah. Because he also never, we teach him how to draw because he never drew. Uh, we'll also teach him how to write because when he, when you let him write his own characters, they were incredibly sexist. Was it a, like, they yeah, were like, awful. Incredibly sexist. No he, condoms, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, <laughs> I, make, I no, make them disappear. I'm talking about fucking Stripperella. Like he's wrong uh, with Stripperella. Hey, it's a job. Okay. Stripper by night, superhero by day. Where there's not a lot of crime. Yeah, her, her superpowers. Were, her, so then you could sleep during the day. Yeah, her uh, luscious boobies, and she can make men say whatever secret they have. That's true. But yes, that's what Stan Lee made when Stan Lee couldn't steal his ideas from Jack Kirby or Steve Ditko. He's horny. He's Stan Lee. <laughs> he was, and there's a lot of issues with that as well. Yeah, all there's right, many issues. Everyone. Yeah. Thank you all so much for listening. <laughs> we'll see you in the land down under in August. Can't wait to see you all then. Thanks for supporting all the shows and our new little ventures on Sirius. Thanks for all the calls. Y'all are wonderful. Yep. And yeah, just keep on supporting all the shows here on the network. Uh, the stream will be starting up probably within the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. Cannot wait. I've already got some fun videos. Me Cannot too. wait. Man, I've been mining those again. The internet has provided. There's been a lot since we've been gone. Been oh, yeah, dude. On. No, There's it's thick. I it's think thick. people have gotten crazier and dumber, Yeah, mm -hmm. which yep. is a combo that we need for our stream. Yep. And, yeah, and I have a theory for that. I'm not going to go into it now, but there is a very much a theory as to why uh, the entirety of the world has gotten both crazier, dumber, uh, and meaner all at the same time. We're going to get into it. Bing bong, baby. Bing bong. <laughs> all right, everyone. Hail yourself. Hail Satan. Okay. My constellations. Uh, hail me because you know my body needs it. That's right. And okay, hail my fourth belly. Hail your fourth belly and look to the skies. You're not going to say anything? <laughs> You're just going to give me another look. 5G. <laughs> 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 This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com. Yeah.